Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Card Strip Racing 2 with Brogue Hammer Auto House. Today's episode is all focused on the Phoenix NX. Um, so what we're going to do is there's a couple different engine packages that I have for it. I'm going to kind of explain both of them. Um, and then we're also going to enter a top four blitz, show you how it performs in that category with the stock engine because even maxed out, the stock motor is under 600 horsepower. So it uh, is eligible to enter the top four blitz competitions. Um, I will then switch it up to the 2JZ motor, which is the three liter I6T in the game. Um, it's just a straight six turbo, um, that's three liters. So that's the 2J, we're gonna jump into that as well. So I'm gonna show you both of the tunes on those um, right after we jump into the top four blitz. So we're gonna jump into a qualifying run. Um, this is with the stock engine. And then like I said, if you guys want to skip to just the tuning section, go to about the last um, six or seven minutes of the video. Um, and you can check out all the tunes there for both stock motor and 2JZ. Um, they're going to be labeled at the very beginning of when I start talking about the tuning sections later on. As you can see in my first qualifying run, not a great run. Um, I got too wide on pretty much every single turn and ran into those tires. Um, luckily they did kind of change, at least I think, how those tires are pushing the car and they're not making you, it's not like hitting a brick wall anymore. They actually move a little bit, um, which does really help for if you accidentally stuff it a little too deep on these. Um, here's my second qualifying run. Um, I'm also going to be fairly critical on this one. Um, I just want to explain to you guys kind of how I approach these. And basically, I try to get more and more aggressive as the runs go on, knowing that I already put up a decent score on run one, which really was not a good run. Um, here I'm planning on doing basically a conservative second run, make sure I can get all the clipping points, um, get a good score. And then third run, you go all out, um, for as many points as you possibly can get um, with obviously the risk of spinning out or um, crashing or going a little too deep into some corners. Um, the third qualifying run here was my best of the three qualifying runs as you'll see. Um, I scored the highest points on this one. Nice entry on the outside. Um, worked my way out far enough to get fully in that outside zone two. Um, outside zone three swept in and got my back bumper right to the back of it. Zone four, same thing, back edge. Zone five, got a little late into zone five there and then kicked it out to finish it off for about 5,600 DP um, on my score here. So now that we've gotten through that, you can see that I qualified in third place. Now that will typically put me up against the number two person on, in the qualifier, which it did. Um, he had 6,200 points, so I needed to gain at least 700 more than what he was able to gain on chase with me. And um, of course, immediately I saw that he was running a semi-slick tire on the first run. Um, I was only running a sport, so I knew I would have to play a lot of catch up and I would fall pretty far behind um, if I didn't just stay on throttle. I was able to stay with him fairly decently, um, but like I said, even um, with qualifying and with these runs as well, I try to focus on what he's doing up front so that I know what to do in the chase over the next couple runs as I get more and more aggressive uh, towards the final part of the battle basically. So uh, I obviously I'm going to switch to a semi-slick, replace those because they were under 30% left and try to chase him down a little bit better. He was running kind of a funky line and I actually battled this guy, same livery anyway, in the last top four that I did, same car, same livery and everything. So I'm sure it's the same driver, but um, he's not the smoothest lead, lead driver. Uh, he tends to be really twitchy and I'm kind of surprised that they let him get away with, you know, running into this tire wall so hard, straightening out um, in Formula Drift. Everybody knows that would be an incomplete, but um, this game's not quite that uh, in detail about what's going to nullify the run, which is okay, because it's a game. We're all here to have fun. Um, he did put down a decent lead run. I was able to chase him fairly well on the second run, and even somewhat on the third run, but I really will, still wasn't happy with um, how, you know, the proximity I wasn't able to get you know, kind of where I wanted to be in proximity to this guy. Um, obviously, I'm not used to running semi-slick tires on this under 600 horsepower rig, so um, it did handle a lot differently than I was expecting. Um, but you got to be prepared for that no matter what. So I got a pretty decent chase, kind of swung ahead of him and got, you know, at least a little more proximity, um, but the score still wasn't there. I think my first chase run or my second chase run was the highest scoring run. Um, I did end up winning that battle against him. Um, so as you can see here, he only ended up having 12,000, which means he struggled in chase behind me. I'm assuming that's because he was on a semi-slick. He may not have changed his to a sport tire to match, um, in which case it would be really hard to chase. 
So now I'm starting with uh, almost a thousand DP deficit to this lead driver. And I had the same mistake here on run one where I was still running the semi slicks from the last battle. Um, but then I saw that he was just running sports. So I knew I'd be a little too fast and too grippy for him on the first run. But at least I could watch and see what his line does. This guy had a great lead run, really fun to chase. Um, and you'll see what ended up bringing my ultimate demise in run three when I just went for gold basically. And uh, it's kind of a win or die trying. So um, after this, I switched to the sport tires obviously to match him so I could get on a similar line, have more proximity um, and gain more points that way without going so far into him to touch his bumper or something where we would lose the multiplier. So on the second run, you can see um, starts a little further back because I'm on those sport tires. Um, but initiate and try to you know, draw them in a little bit, get a little closer, um, but still keeping some distance um, because like I said, I don't want to touch his bumper and ruin my multiplier. Um, he really angles up in that bottom hillside there and then a nice smooth transition out to the final corner with a little tire tap, but didn't really mess up his whole line or anything. And then into the finish. Now, obviously with not great first two runs, this third run was all or nothing. And uh, I just wanted to see if I could potentially pull off the upset against him being that he had such a higher qualifying number. I would need to have that much better of a chase than him as well. Um, started off poor. I entered a little too early and too in front of him. Um, so I was really trying to catch up here and get right on him. Did a pretty good job there. And then when I transitioned, it was just a little too much where I couldn't catch it fast enough to maintain that proximity. And at this point, you know, I understood that I probably wasn't going to win the battle, even though I hadn't looked at the scores yet. Um, but I did jump out. He um, ended up beating me in that battle, so I did end up with just a second place finish. But nonetheless, these top four blitzes are super fun. They're super fast paced, and it's not like waiting around for those top 32 battles that take a really long time. So we're going to jump in um, and work on the tuning stuff right away. Um, this is going to be with the stock engine setup because I'm assuming that most of you guys are running the stock motor on this one still. Um, but like I said, I'll be doing that 2J swap later. Uh, I do have the slide performance body kit on mine. Uh, it's just the one that I like the most. I changed out the rear bumper for a new one and messed with the spoiler and some other stuff. But um, they have some cool body kits. You know, the CBW looks really nice. That's the one I stole the rear bumper from. Um, the street kit makes it look like kind of an S15. Uh, and then the RNT is the Rocket Bunny Pandem kit. And then the D Master changes it to the, I believe it's the Kooky front end, but I'm not an expert on S chassis, so don't hold me to that. Uh, but nice looking car as well. I end up liking the slide the most with the pop up headlights. I thought that was a good look. And uh, you guys can find my tunes in the tuning store. They'll be labeled Broke Auto House. Um, I'm going to post both the stock motor and the 2J. Um, I also did unlock the 3.8 liter V6 twin turbo for this car, uh, but I really didn't like how it performed in this chassis. I'm not sure if it was a poor tuning on the motor on my part or something, but I like that engine in some other cars. It just didn't work for this, the way that I had it set up. So again, this is the stock engine tune. Um, we're at seven centimeters of spring height, 56 on stiffness about half to a third of the sway bar possibility, and then point, negative 0.08 wheel toe. Um, caster I have locked all the way out in Ackerman angle at uh, 58%, which I feel like if you wanted to, you could maybe increase that Ackerman angle a little bit. Um, right now the front end grabs pretty aggressively, and if you want that to be a little bit looser and get a wider drift, you just need to increase your front Ackerman. So uh, the bumps and everything are gonna be pretty similar. I haven't messed with those a whole lot. Negative one camber in the rear, um, a little bit of sway bar and stiffness and spring size are very low. Um, that's because it's a low horsepower car. I didn't want to, you know, you don't need that much stiffness to counterbalance the power that you're putting to the ground. I run a square setup, um, 19 by 255s front and rear. Uh, on the rear tire, I was, I know they're both running 200 um, pressure, but the 255s are about as big as you'd want to go for something that's really only got a little over 500 horsepower. Um, once you get to the higher power levels, you're gonna want you know a bigger tire. Uh, the differential, I have at a 0.62 with a 447 overall gear ratio. Again, that's uh, a very high gear ratio, but something to combat the low power. And then my fifth gear is at a 110, which I usually aim for a 1.0 or less. But again, it's the low power issue. And you'll see as I move on to the tune for the 2J, how much different uh, some of those things are in the tune. 
So I figured I would hop out with the stock motor real quick, um, show you just a couple quick, quick drift lines, a um, matter of a couple, you know, 20 seconds, and then we'll move on to the uh, 2J tune for you guys to check out as well. Uh, quick note, if you do like the video, please hit the like button down below. It significantly helps me in the algorithm. I know it's a YouTuber thing that everybody says and it gets annoying, um, but it is, you know, something that really helps us. So I appreciate anybody that does that and subscribes to the channel as always. Um, we're trying to get to 5K in the next three months. So a thousand a month is what I'm hoping for. Um, it's a little bit more of an op optimistic goal, but if you guys can help me get there, it'd be much appreciated. Um, so as we finish up here with the stock tune drift, you can see it's got you know smooth lines, kind of wide drifting, um, but it does struggle on the larger, longer corners um, because of the power, you know, significantly lower. So here we go on the 2J tune. There's a couple things differently here. Um, I have my wheel toe. I just adjusted a little bit, but negative four, a little less caster, but more Ackerman uh, for the higher horsepower tune. You could lower that Ackerman level if you want more front grip. This one's set up really loose in the front because I like to just let the rear wheels um, do the drifting and kind of float the front ones a little bit. But uh, no sway bar in the rear so we can get ultimate grip. And then I'm running 285s all around on this one um, with a 35% profile. And as you can see in the rear, I do have 220 on the air pressure of the rear tire, uh, which is not standard for me. But I also have the RPM at max torque, not maxed out. Um, if it's maxed out, you can get the car up to like 800 and some horsepower. Um, but sometimes that is gonna cause you to bog down if you are going into a corner and need a clutch kick or something. So uh, something to look at there. And then you can see here, because of the more power, my fifth gear is at a 0.89 gear ratio. Um, and the overall gear ratio in general is much lower as well because you have the power to um, overpower that uh, issue with kind of getting into drift. Um, so that's gonna do it for basically the 2J tune. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer them. If you wanna see certain videos, uh, leave a suggestion in the comments as well and we'll see what we can do. Uh, I do have a good list running already, so expect a couple weeks before you'll see the video that you request, but I do try to respond to everybody in the comment section. So uh, if you have questions, you don't know how to do something, leave a comment below and I'm happy to help. Um, that's going to do it for today's episode, guys. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for being here. Until next time, have a good one. Thank you.